I just checked the dictionary and looked for the word pump and dump. And what did I find? I found the power ledger chart. What an incredible ride. Now this is not the first video on power ledger on this channel. I published one just three and a half days ago and initially not so many people were interested in that video. The video tended to underperform quite a bit, but it's now picking up. What's especially picking up is the number of subscribers. The video was titled Why Power Ledger is Up, and we looked at those following three charts. The charts look at on chain metrics, as in how many holders are there for Power Ledger. It's segregated into three different sizes. On the left hand are the retail people, the smaller wallets, in the middle are the medium sized ones. On the right are the whales. And the number of wallets for every type went down here while the price was going up. And so the conclusion was that this is likely price manipulation. And now we've got the confirmation of that thesis. Now the tool with those three charts is not public. I developed this myself and I published this for the premium members. Link is down below, thebitcoinstrade.com. But there's a way to also spot these kinds of manipulations without that tool. And in this video, I want to show you how. The first interesting marker is always to look at the 24 hour trading volume relative to the market cap. So in this case, the trading volume is seven times the size of the market cap. So in average, every power token moved hands seven times in the last 24 hours. This is not natural. Very often these kinds of inflated trading volumes happen whenever there's price manipulation. But what we also need for price manipulation is a strong holding by centralized exchanges. And look at this. A lot of the trading volume happens on upbit and on Binance. Another nice catalyst is if there are perpetual futures. By the way, all of that data is here on CoinGecko, right? You go to CoinGecko, you go to the markets tab. This is where you find this. Whenever there are perpetual futures, you also have a much higher likelihood of manipulation. The idea here is that the centralized exchanges own the token, but they also offer bets on the price of the token. Now, if you're a sports betting house and you offer bets on a sports game, right? But at the same time, you have impact on the outcome of the game because you bought the referee. You've got a very nice money printing machine. And this is essentially what's going on here. Strong holdings by centralized exchanges plus perpetual futures. Now, another thing to look out for is that there is very little trading volume on chain. So you copy the token address and you go to dexscreener.com and you search for that token. And then you have a look at how much liquidity and how much trading volume is there on chain. And we do have enough data to populate our nice charts here because those are on chain charts. We don't know what happens on centralized exchanges, but it's still very, very little liquidity and very, very little volume compared to what happens centralized. 20 million of trading volume in a decentralized way, but again, 1.3 billion if we include the centralized exchanges as well. One more thing you want to look out for. When you go to Dex Screener, then on the right, you can see the link to the holder pie chart over here. You click on this HLD link and then you get to Ether Scan, and this shows us who owns the token. And if you've got a lot of holdings by centralized exchanges, this is potentially dangerous. So of course, it's always best to just look on chain at the number of holders, what are retail and whale investors doing. But if you don't have access to that tool, you can simply just look at trading volumes relative to centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges and look at holder distribution. This already gives a pretty good first impression. If there's so much trading volume happening and it's all just on centralized exchanges, you want to be somewhat careful, especially if the price is currently rising very, very quickly. You want to set at least a trailing stop loss, as in as the price moves up, you want to adjust your stop loss. And then once the price turns around, you want to be exiting very, very fast. If it's your first time here, feel free to subscribe. I publish videos regularly. A like would be very much appreciated as well. It helps the channel grow. There's also a free telegram link is down below.